Hi, my name is Ken, and you're watching Mastering UX, where we cover UX design, UX research, and UX strategy pieces. After doing some videos on personas, I did receive some requests to explain in more detail on how do you do a persona-weighted feature matrix. Well, today we're going to cover this very underrated UX method. It's called the persona-weighted feature matrix. One of the reasons that personas can fail often is that they can be perceived as impractical, often regarded as only a nice to have asset and are often poorly applied to projects. Well, today I will share with you this UX method that I've used in consulting several times and also in many of the companies that I've worked for, which can make personas very practical and integral to the projects that you're on and very rich in application. So stay tuned as we cover one of my favorite UX methods, the persona weighted feature matrix. So what is a feature matrix? The persona weighted feature matrix is another tool that complements personas. It's a table or grid that maps out features or requirements against the personas. The matrix helps in prioritizing features based on the needs and the goals of the personas, making it easier to make informed decisions during the design and development process. So before we talk about how to create this matrix, here's a visual example of a persona weighted feature matrix in a spreadsheet. So first you can see that listed out are all your personas horizontally across the top. Second, you can kind of see that there's a list of potential product features and capabilities vertically in the first column. And then in the row beneath, you see that there's the personas names and they're assigned a percentage weights for each personas, which always add up to 100%. This shows the overall priority of each user type. This illustration shows an example. So in each cell, there are weights from one to five based on how important that feature is for that persona. You kind of see that there's one, there's not useful, relevant, nice to have, but critical, somewhat valuable, very important, and five essential. Well, I would say even interestingly, you can even make the decision to allow for negative weights if the feature is of negative value to the persona. Now, in the column that um, there are uh, the scores for each feature is weighted, uh, there's a total that sums up the priority for each feature. So if you have alignment with stakeholders on the persona weights and you have alignment on how much each persona would value each feature, you now have an objective view on what features matter the most to your personas to inform your design and development decisions. So what is the value of the feature matrices? Well, here are some additional points that I'll give you that, uh, that there's some value on these persona weighted feature matrices. Um, this makes the features much more objective in prioritization. It provides a quantitative scores to supplement qualitative assumptions and helps remove the personal bias. It allows for data driven prioritization based on personal priorities. This forces your personas to be meaningful because um, the business stakeholders will need to rethink the weighting of each persona if they want to change the prioritization. It aligns personas and features with business goals and allows for shifting of priorities. This now makes personas relevant to designers and stakeholders. It generates personal persona buy-in by showing the direct impact of personas on product features. It allows designers to speak the language of stakeholders and makes personas a living document tied to the roadmap of priorities. So let's talk about the UX process of creating persona weighted feature matrix matrices. Although I show you at the top the feature matrix in a spreadsheet, I still need to show you how do you create this matrix collaboratively with the business. So first, you're going to create your ad hoc personas. Before diving into the feature matrix, you'll need to have your ad hoc personas ready. And I have some other videos that really get a lot more into detail on this. But in short, personas can be derived from stakeholder interviews, customer interviews, or workshops. Um, I like to do a three-hour persona workshop where I generate stakeholder buy-in and personas. I allow the stakeholders to modify and to add to the personas that I've already done some research on and I already have some kind of intuition that I'm somewhat hitting the mark. 
During this time, I give an introduction to what the criteria might be to make a good persona set. I try to drive that discussion towards a consensus on personas that represent the customers that would demand all the features that we will do for the project and are good targets for our business goals. Step two, weight the personas. Now with the business stakeholders all in the same room, we can allow each person in the room to vote uh, by assigning a weight to each persona based on the importance to the project, uh, the weights for all the personas that add up to 100% like the example I gave. Something important that I've learned the hard way is that stakeholders have a strong tendency to give everyone an average weight. For example, if you have four personas, they might put down 23%, 22%. 27 percent and 28 percent i try to remind the stakeholders that if the persona is fully satisfied and and that that you feel that they would make a huge product success don't be afraid to give that persona 50 percent or more weighting step three list your features now using the persona's goals wants or needs create a list of all the features or requirements that are under consideration for your product or service Uh, If you collaborate with technical folks or stakeholders, uh, feel free to to add in more people to get their input. One tip is to make sure that the features are user features. There should be no background infrastructure features or any feature that does not directly benefit the user. Step four, score the features. For each persona um, feature intersection in the matrix, assign a score that represents how that feature is to that persona. And then in step five, you're going to want to calculate the weighted scores, multiply the score of each feature by the weight of the persona to get the weighted score. This is all really done through a formula in a spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet's going to sum up all of these features across all the personas. And here's an example of what that formula looks like in Excel or something like Google Sheets. So in conclusion, persona weighted feature matrices provide an objective quantitative way to connect personas to product decisions, enabling teams to make more user centered choices. I believe this process of creating uh, the feature matrix will make your personas extremely practical and integral to the projects that you're working on and very rich in application. So thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more free UX content like this. If you have any thoughts or questions on user experience, drop them in the comments below as they really help the YouTube prioritize my videos. I hope to see you next time. My name is Ken and you're watching Mastering UX.